Number four, so 2019 was the year that I really came to realize um, what position I serve in a social group. Um, and in doing so, I've come to realize maybe where my calling for future career prospects may be. So, what am I talking about? Um, so, in our friend group, when I'm in a social situation, um, I used to feel really anxious that I wasn't an interesting enough um, conversationalist, I guess. And I'd feel really bad about that, that I, I don't talk enough or I listen more than I talk. And when I do say things, they come out weird, which does happen, you know. But really, first of all, I've come to appreciate that there are certain types of friends that are totally okay with that. And they still like me anyway. And those are the kinds of people that I should be friends with. But my position in the group, I think, is I'm constantly listening to what people are saying but not just the actual words they're saying. If they're talking about something, I'm very good as an INFP at working out what might actually be up with this person. So they're talking about this problem that they're having, but maybe either they're not comfortable talking about the deeper meaning behind that problem, or maybe they honestly don't realize themselves the core problem that is having this knock-on effect in their life, you know? Um, but when I sit and I listen, and if I care about these people that I'm around, if, if they're in my inner circle, I'm constantly on alert looking for ways to help them work through their problems. Um, and I, I generally don't jump in straight away. I like to gather information and get a feel for it. Um, and it may be the next time I see them that I've formulated some ideas or I've come up with questions to ask that will maybe reveal a bit more information or sometimes I can ask questions that will just help the person realize what's up. You know, I think that's very vague. In realizing the role that I can serve in our friend group um, and that I really get a lot of satisfaction out of helping people. Um, and also that as an INFP, talking about their feelings and what's happening in their life is what I enjoy. Like that's what I'm seeking. Like it, it serves me as much as it will hopefully serve them. So. Also, um, just along the lines of where I'm going with this, with career goals. Um, so in the past, I have worked a little bit in retail. And first of all, didn't hate it as much as I thought I would. Because at the end of the day, you are interacting with other people. Which can be very painful as an INFP at times. Uh, but it was really also enlightening because the other people I work with, um, I guess my interest in humans and the human experience and the individual person that's in front of me, even if I'm just like selling them something, and by selling them, I mean like they've picked, I'm not a salesperson, um, they're just buying something and I'm telling them how much it is and taking the money and getting them changed. You know what I mean. Retail. Um, that I greatly am interested in the actual people. And I couldn't do this job long term because it's too exhausting for me. Uh, not only because I'm an introvert and I'm having to speak to people, um, but also because... 
I think about this person who I'm, who's just buying this thing. I, I think about them too deeply to make this like, it, it's like I'm assessing them for friendship and closeness, even though I'm not like, but that's what my brain is doing. You know, like I'm, I'm looking at them as a person and maybe this thing that they're buying and I legitimately care if, if it's a good choice for them. Um, you know, like, even though like I, I wouldn't overstep my bounds and say anything about whether it's a good choice for them. Like that's, that's not my place, but I do think about it. Like if, if, okay. So if this person's clearly struggling with their health, like it's very obvious they're struggling with their health and they might even tell me that they're struggling with their health. Um, but they're still buying this thing that's going to harm them, you know? Like it's not my place to say anything, but I still feel that because I also understand that it's hard for them to stop buying this thing that's bad for them. Like I understand all the reasoning why they would still buy this thing that's harming them um, and that it's really hard for them to stop buying this thing, but like I care too much and I think too much about the implications of the purchase, if you know what I mean. Um, so anyway, I don't think retail is a good fit for me, is what I'm saying. And my realization of where I fit in a friend group. Um, and also with my own personal development in recent years, I think I'm ready to embark potentially <laughs> on um, a career that's somehow related to counseling. Um, I really felt that as much as I wanted to help other people in the past, First of all, I had three kids at home that I felt needed more of my attention, but obviously that's now changed. Um, and I felt like I was too much of a mess to help anybody else. Um, but on the other hand, I'm still a mess in a lot of ways, but sometimes helping other people really helps you through your own things. So I don't think you need to be perfect in order to help other people. Is what I'm saying. So anyway, in 2020, I've enrolled in a diploma of counseling. So that's what I'm going to be doing. Um, and although that's in 2020, I came to the realization throughout 2019 that that was a good fit for me and something that I would like to learn more about. Okay, number five, obviously this year has been big on um, the shift in the stage in my life course uh, with two of my kids mostly independent or completely independent in my eldest's case um, and you know like I'm a mum of teenagers I'm not a mum of little kids that need lots of attention from me um, they're a lot more independent and the past few years have been quite difficult, uh, not only with, you know, some sneaking feelings of empty nest syndrome sneaking in, um, but also I've been a stay at home mum for a long time. So that has been my job. That has been my role. But when you're a stay at home mum and your youngest child is now a teenager or almost a teenager, you know, a few years ago, um, or even like at 12, they stop needing you so much. And especially because all of mine are boys, like they really need their dad for a lot of self-development more than they need me. I'm just sort of like peripheral to their development. Like I can be there and help, but I'm not, I'm not number one like I was when they were like three. A three-year-old like needs their mum all the time. Um, so that was a shift in my role in the family. So I, in recent years, have really had to come to terms with the shift in my role in the family and trying to find my place. Um, and part of that is definitely going to be furthering my development. And I've been further, like I've been working on self-development this entire time more and more as the kids have become more and more independent. But now I'm more interested in that self-development 
being a saleable skill, not just something to serve my family. Um, and I think this is a less common thing for women to go through of my generation. Um, so I'm a millennial, I'm 35. So I feel like this is a less common thing for most millennials to have to go through. I think because millennials have kids a lot later in life than say our parents did. Our parents, like boomers, definitely had kids younger than what we did, like our generation. But obviously I did have kids young um, and I had the luxury of being a stay at home mum for a lot of that time. And that doesn't seem to be like a common experience that other millennials seem to be having. So I don't really have other people to discuss this with or experience this with. Uh, but that's been the case my entire adult life because nobody else was really having kids when I was having kids that were the same age range as me. Um, which, you know, I'm an INFP. I'm totally okay with being on my own most of the time. Um, but this is like a new life stage and obviously it is easier to embark on a new life stage when you have other role models to look to um, and learn from. But I don't feel like I've had that so much. I feel like other women, first of all, had careers to throw themselves into when their kids left home, um, but also were a bit older than me when they get to this stage. So probably more developed themselves, not only because they've had a career, but also because they have the luxury of, you know, five, 10 years of extra experience and maturity. Um, so it's been a struggle the last few years to try and find my footing. But I feel like 2019, I've really started to get a hold of things and um yeah it's still an adjustment and obviously my 13 year old is still only 13 but he is a lot more independent than he was when he was three obviously you know and even eight-year-olds they love their moms they want to hang out with their moms but 13 year olds 14 year olds not not so much you know um but yeah, I've had to adjust to my changing role in the family and society. And I do feel like this diploma of counselling, I mean, I don't want to put too much weight on it because you, you can't, like self-development does help you, but you can't rely on like, if I get this piece of paper, then everything will be okay. You need to be okay on lots of different levels not just this narrow goal that you have. Yeah, I'm pretty excited for this new stage of life and I'm pretty okay with it. Now, I know I have sweat all over my face and I have done for this entire video, um, yet we're back to like the summer videos where I can't keep sweat off my face. I apologize if it's really gross for you. Thanks so much for watching guys. I would love to hear your thoughts on 2019. Um, were there any like big milestones that you reached in your self-development in 2019? Did 2019 like mean a lot to you um, in certain ways? Or I guess did it being the end of a decade, did that create a shift for you personally or was it a really shitty year and you're just really excited to go into 2020 and make some new changes and hopefully have a better year i'd love to hear how 2019 was for you thanks so much for watching guys and i will see you in the next one bye